Tanks of the T-80 series are probably the most versatile vehicles available to tankers at the highest ranks of the Soviet tech tree. These MBTs have good firepower, good armor, and good mobility all at the same time, which isn't typical for Soviet MBTs, to put it mildly. Today we're going to discuss the vehicles of the series and the ways you can use them to unlock their full potential. The first researchable tank of the series is waiting for you at rank 7, the T-80B. It has the signature low profile, which is common for Soviet tanks of the era, a well-designed turret, and an autoloader. The main difference between the T-80B and the other members of the T-80 family is that it's noticeably lacking in the armor department. The 1978 version of the tank simply can't take much punishment, despite featuring multi-layer armor. It retains the common weak spots found on Soviet vehicles, like the driver's port and the lower frontal plate, but the upper glacis isn't well protected either. It can stop early 105mm subcaliber rounds, but 120mm and more advanced 105mm APF SDS rounds can easily pierce it. To increase the survivability of the vehicle at close range, angle the UFP as much as you can. In all other scenarios, the tank is best used in hull-down positions where only the turret is exposed. The 3BM42 Mango APF SDS round is pretty effective against any opponent, but it's still a good idea to aim for weak spots specifically, like the shot trap under the gun of the Abrams or the LFP of the Leopard 2. Keep in mind that the Soviet autoloader is a bit slower than its Western counterparts, so make every shot count. And it's always a safe bet to destroy the breach first when fighting against a solo target. Compared to other Soviet, Chinese, and British MBTs, the tanks of the T-80 series are pretty fast and maneuverable. The gas turbine of the tank allows it to reach 70 kilometers an hour in forward gear, and up to 10 kilometers an hour in reverse. That's enough speed to be among the first to arrive at good firing positions at the very start of the match. Some of those are going to be even more advantageous to you than to people using Western tanks. One good example is the monument in the center of the town in Normandy. You can play the T-80 in different ways according to your preferences. It's well suited for quick, aggressive play, but it's also a decent sniper. Regardless of that, you still have to take into account the traits and quirks of the vehicle. For instance, because of its layout with the turret placed in the center of the hull, the tank can be at a disadvantage in urban environments. One of the ways to mitigate that is to be proactive, to immediately get out of cover and destroy the enemy's gun before they can hurt you. Being on the move is actually one of the best ways to survive. It's pretty hard to hit weak spots on a pretty small, well-protected tank that comes at you at full speed. Another weakness of the vehicle is that the aiming speed of its gun is rather slow, and the gun doesn't have a lot of depression to work with. Because of that, it's a good idea to avoid steep slopes and stick to smaller terrain features that can be used to hide your hull. The T-80 thrives in areas that are on relatively level terrain and offer lots of cover options, like the southern part of the village on Hürtgen Forest. Don't worry about losing sight of your enemies, as the tank is fitted with an experimental Agava thermal imaging site. It's very handy for sniping, but it's also pretty useful up close. Just deploy a smoke screen, back up a bit, and then simply look for targets through the cloud. If you're in a hilly area and have no option but to engage someone, you can still hit them with a well-timed suspension shot. Get in position, wait for your gun to dip below the regular level, fire, and then go back to cover. The Soviet and the Swedish T-80U, the commander version known as the T-80UK, the experimental T-80UM2, and the Russian T-80BVM play pretty much the same way as the base model. It's true that late vehicles of the series received a more powerful engine, but they also became considerably heavier. Late T-80s have thicker composite armor on their UFPs, and the Contact 5 ERA on the T-80U and the Relict on the T-80 BVM are pretty effective against both heat and subcaliber projectiles. Basically, the only flaw that newer models inherited from the T-80B is the gun's aiming speed. To put it bluntly, all variants of the T-80U have a slower vertical and horizontal aiming speed than any other high-tier MBT. The good news is that you can mitigate some of that by turning your hull. 
The premium T80UD and the Event T80UM2 are well suited for daylight engagements at mid to close range. The T80UD features a more powerful diesel engine and a T64 style transmission. It should be played just as any regular Soviet MBT by making careful use of hull down positions. The turret of the T80 UM2 is fitted with the Drozd hard kill APS that reliably takes care of the tow and hellfire missiles. The LOSAT, the ADATs, and some special projectiles can still hurt you, but in most cases, the UM2 is well protected against missile attacks coming from helicopters, drones, and pesky IFVs. Try to take as much advantage of the APS as possible. Drost launchers have a lot of ammo, and every intercepted missile is a huge loss for the enemy in terms of time and resources. Sadly, the T-80 UK can't do quite the same, as its Stora soft kill APS can't really deal with most high rank missiles. But at least you get an LWS that'll warn you about the danger, so there's that. The most advanced vehicle of the series is the T-80 BVM. It received new front-side ERA packages and better thermals, but most importantly, the aiming speed of its 125mm gun was finally brought on par with the best Western MBTs. It's an almost perfect tank for high-rank, aggressive play that doesn't have most of the flaws commonly associated with Soviet MBTs. Another thing is that the T-80 BVM can fire the top-notch 3BM60 Svignets APF SDS. It's fairly similar to the Mango in terms of use, but deals more damage when hitting weak spots. One special case is the experimental Object 292. It can't deploy smoke screens and is not equipped with machine guns or ERA. What it does have, though, is a monstrous large caliber gun. The 152mm LP-83 cannon is the most powerful tank gun in War Thunder. If we're talking about sheer firepower, the only thing that hits harder is probably just the LOSAT anti-tank missile system. Heavy APF SDS rounds used by the Object 292 easily punch through many MBTs, including the modern ones, and your HE shells are powerful enough to KO about anyone with a single shot to the roof. This insane firepower doesn't mean that you can act with impunity, though. The gun takes ages to reload and aim. Not to mention that there's always a tiny chance that the enemy might survive the hit due to some sheer luck. Tanks of the T-80 series are true Soviet all-rounders that will work well regardless of your preferred playstyle. How do you play them? Share your stories in the comments below.